and good evening and welcome to a brand new show a billion ideas the power of a billion that is india's population and the power of three eyes ideas innovations and intentions on this show we will dissect the complex character of new india the india of today india in the information age where our social cultural and political landscape is in a constant state of flux as more and more indians have been empowered with a voice citizens today are bigger stakeholders in the future and the framing of the idea of india on today's episode we highlight a major phenomenon in the nation's electoral politics where a long dismissed voter base asserted its power to turn the tide saw the saffron storm in four states Prime Minister Narendra Modi leveraging his brand to power the BJP juggernaut The saffron machine energized by the M factor that is the mahila voter Modi yogi kuch diye ka hai mahina mein de tumara एका थाली हां किसानन के देत मा वो किसान नहीं आवत खेती वाला पैसा 2000 रुपया महीना छ महीना मिलत बा वो शौचालय बनाला किसानन के 6000 महीना और सलीना मिलला खाद पानी खातिन के हां और राशन मिलत था राशन तो मिल जाता है मतलब महीना में दो बार तो खाना के तो खुराकी तो हो जाता है लेकिन एक कितना दिन मिलेगा अरे जोन महीना घाटा लगा वो महीना में मिलल हां आ हाँ ये तो दो चार दिन के अंदर में पौले ही जा ये पै ना मिल हाई कुल ना मिल कितने बार मिलता है ये तो तीन चार बार मिल गए हाई ना तीन चार बार हम के मिल गए वुमेन आउट वोटेड मैन इन ऑल फोर स्टेट्स द बीजेपी स्वेप्ट battle ground uttar pradesh the mantra was shehar mein shasan aur gaon mein rashan sab suvidha hai rashan mil raha do vir mahine mein mahilaon ke liye sabse bada mudda kya hai ha bhatera ho raha mahila ke liye to hum unhe wo bhi mil raha loan le lo kitna hi bhatera wo mil raha suvidha itni to kisi ne bhi na kari is samay balika shiksha pe bhi jata sarkar de rahi hai mahatva de rahi hai ki sabhi balika ne jitni bhi ladkiyan hain unke liye shiksha बड़े पहले तो इतना नहीं था लेकिन अब तो लड़कियां आगे बढ़ रही हैं हर औरत यही चाहती है कि एक सेफ माहौल मिले उसे उसके बच्चों को अच्छी एजुकेशन मिले और एक बिजनेस इंटरप्रीनियर का एक जो होता है एक एटमॉस्फेयर हो कि अपना बिजनेस रन कर पाए सेफली एंड जॉब अपॉर्चुनिटीज वेलफेयर सेफ्टी कनेक्ट एलिवेटेड द बीजेपी स्टॉक अमंग फीमेल वोटर्स कहीं ना कहीं हम पीछे हैं तो हमें एक ज़रूरत है और ज़्यादा स्कोप मिले एक अच्छा प्लेटफॉर्म मिले जहाँ पे हम अपने आप को रिप्रेजेंट कर सके वेमेन स्पेशली आर यू ऑल ऑफ यू फीलिंग सेफ इन यूपी नाउ फ्रॉम व्हाट इट वाज प्रीवियसली मैं पीजी में आई हूँ अब जाके मुझे को छोड़ा है वरना तो क्या होता है ग्रेजुएशन के बाद या तो कुछ करा देते हैं शादी वादी या फिर घर पे ही बैठाते हैं बाहर अकेले जैसे पीजी में छोड़ना स्टडी को छोड़ देते थे लेकिन ऐसे लड़की को अकेले बाहर पढ़ने के लिए नहीं जाने देते तो एक तो इस पे वेज इस पे भी कि हाँ सेफ्टी सिक्योरिटी यू फील सेफ द ऑपोजिशन फेल्ड टू काउंटर द बीजेपी काम और क्रेडिबिलिटी इमेज जब से योगी जी आए मुझे लगता है कि थोड़ा विमेन सेफ्टी को लेके बेटर हुआ है अभी लड़कियां पूरे गांव की जाती हैं बाहर पढ़ने पहले एक भी लड़कियां नहीं जाती थी यहाँ तक कि गांव के स्कूल में भी बहुत कम जाती थी पढ़ने अब बाहर जा रही हैं पढ़ने के लिए क्योंकि अब सेफ्टी है इसलिए ऑन अ बिलियन आइडियाज वी डी कोड द महिला फैक्टर इन इंडिया पोलिटिकल लैंडस्केप So have the recent elections underscored the rise of a critical pan India vote bank 
If we decode the turnout in the four states where the BJP won in Uttar Pradesh, for example, the male voter turnout was around 59.6%, while the female voter turnout was around 62.2%. Shifting focus to Uttarakhand, the male voter turnout was 62.6%, while the female voter turnout was 67.6%, nearly 5% increase. In Manipur, the male voter turnout was 78.2%, while the female voter turnout was just about 2% more at 81% in Goa. The male voter turnout was 87.9% and female came out much more at 90.5%. In fact, in Uttar Pradesh, across all major caste ethnic blocs, women were more likely to vote for the BJP, indicating they were perhaps making different political choices from the male members of their families. The BJP's doorstep welfare schemes have been central to this mobilization from food security, LPG cylinders, house construction to direct cash transfers. The BJP model relates specifically to women who are most likely to utilize the goods that they provide. And beyond criticizing the ruling government, the opposition failed to provide a viable alternative or vision to this very important constituency that is the female voter that we are looking at today. The BJP had the combination of a track record and credibility which the opposition could not match and the BJP remember over years has consciously and cultivated several women's centric policies from Beti Bachao, Beti Padhao to Swachh Bharat, then there is Ujwala among others. So did these factors mobilize female voters and is this a signal of a paradigm shift on the road to 2024? Joining me first on the show straight from New York is Arvind Panagria, Professor of Economics at the Columbia University. Professor Panagria, appreciate your time. Like always, there is a lot of post-poll analysis being done by economists, policy watchers. Many say that welfareism is the reason behind BJP's decisive victory. Be it free ration that I also saw while I was talking to women on the ground, Ujwala Pradhan Mantri, Avas Yojana. Would you say that welfare model has prevailed over caste-based politics in these polls? So let, let me answer that a little bit more broadly, Maria. Uh, you know, uh, 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 it is difficult to 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 sort of uh, pin the victory on uh, any one particular aspect of what uh, the uh, 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 Yogi government did or or what the prime minister has been doing. Uh, I have long felt that you know uh, our analysts. Uh, are simply too much entrenched into this uh, model of uh, caste-based voting. Uh, and so, you know, even the best of the analysts still continue to kind of focus on uh, uh, this, you know, how the caste equations are playing out uh, 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 in any particular election. Hmm. Uh, and, and, you know, after the reforms had begun to show the results, uh, I had really shifted to a different model uh, which uh, uh, in one of the articles uh, I, I uh, co-authored, uh, I had called, you know, the revolution of rising expectations. Yes. Uh, that, you know, uh, there was a time uh, hmm. uh, under the Congress uh, for several decades uh, when very little kind of changed, you know, we were getting in per capita terms, growth rates below 2%. Uh, hmm. And so, you know, people had no hopes, uh, uh, pessimism kind of took over. Uh, fatalism took over uh, and people, you know, ki chalta hai, you know, this is how it is. And so they would usually vote their caste, uh, whatever way, uh, you know, their uh, caste group was voting, hmm. often that determined their behavior. But once, you know, reforms began to show the results uh, and, and the change became much more rapid, uh, a change uh, in, 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 in terms of the lives of the people, both through gov good governance, less corruption, and uh, uh, most importantly, faster growth, uh, which brings about you know, all around change. Hmm. Then you saw the election outcomes turning very much on the performance of the government. Hmm. And Professor Panagria, since you talk about this uh, uh, phrase that I, I remember you writing several years ago, which was about revolution of rising expectations or aspirations, are women in that category now? 
Oh, absolutely. I think women are the first one who catch on. I think, you know, uh, uh, even women that are not in the workforce because they run the households, uh, uh, they see the impact much faster than anybody else. And women also are, the, uh, are you know, pro providers of the children. And what happens to their children is extremely important. So, <laughs> and, and, you know, women also uh, tend to be much more intuitive. They, they see. So uh, I have no doubt actually that, uh, uh, you know, uh, if you analyze, if I could actually uh, uh, break up the data by women voters and uh, male, mot male voters, uh, uh, I, I would be, uh, in fact, begin to see the impact of this revolution of rising expectations uh, among women faster than among men. So Professor Panagria, uh, do you think this rising aspiration is linked to the delivery system? How important was the delivery of these schemes uh, to intended individuals or uh, demographic grouping important in the electoral outcomes? And what role do you think architectures like Aadhaar, Jandhan play in bringing about transparency? Extremely important, extremely important. And particularly, you know, in, in, the more, in these very recent elections, uh, they have been particularly important for the simple reason that during these two years, growth has been very tepid the last two years. Uh, and so in terms of uh, uh, rising incomes, clearly nobody got uh, rising incomes. Uh, and, and therefore, uh, how the delivery of the benefits happened uh, and what was the magnitude of those benefits uh, were absolutely very important. Uh, uh, you know, and, and during this period also, as we know, uh, uh, let's say if you stretch it maybe about five years, uh, some of the benefits, particularly targeted to women, uh, were expended. Uh, I think foremost among them, I, I would say, was the uh, you know uh, LPG, uh, the the uh, uh, cooking. You know, I mean, for, for women uh, uh, to be freed from uh, uh, the smoke uh, and be able to, uh, and also freed in many cases from having to go and collect the wood from uh, uh, from uh, the forest. Yes, uh, there's a big deal. And one more, actually, I should mention here, which is the uh, which is still in the making, but you know, Nalse Jal. Uh, mm -hmm. That I think is another revolutionary change in the lives of women, because you know they are the ones who have to go to the village well or to whatever source of water that is there, a kilometer or two kilometers away, fetch the water, bring it in, and for them, you know, to really kind of not only the ordeal but also the time that it saves. Uh, is this remarkable? So, so those two, I would say, uh, were, were particularly very crucial. Hmm. And uh, Professor Panagria, you have written that Prime Minister can make India world's third largest economy by 2029. What makes you uh, so optimistic about the India story? And how do you see this governance model leveraged uh, to attain the social goal? All right. So. Look, in my thinking, uh, uh, both are important, you know, focusing on social goal is important, but also focusing on growth is important because unless you grow rapidly, you cannot have enough revenues to undertake your social spending. So social spending itself really depends on uh, uh, how much growth uh, you are able to deliver. Uh, uh, so so that the two are very closely interlinked. Uh, now, the other thing, other aspect of social uh, expending is the delivery, right? You know, the, if you don't want uh, uh, only 20% of what uh, you spend uh, ending up uh, to the uh, intended beneficiaries, you want the 100% to reach. Uh, it is rare that 100% reaches, but, you know, as long as you can get 70, 80% of uh, what is being spent to the beneficiary, uh, that's pretty good. Uh, and, and there, I think Prime Minister Modi has uh, done actually wonders, I would say. Uh, you know, once you look at the accumulated impact of what has been done over the last eight years, it's just phenomenal because you know, in my, uh, about 2015, January to almost end of 2017, so almost two years, uh, uh, eight months I was there. And this, is the, this was the period during which all this infrastructure was being built up. So I saw it, uh, you know, being uh, prepared uh, from the ground. Uh, and, and he, uh, uh, in those days, particularly my first year, emphasized the Aadhaar uh, uh, expansion uh, 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 the most. You know, that is what he 
felt that uh, uh, could could really uh, change the entire delivery system. And he's himself very involved, you know, very directly. Uh, and so, uh, 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 if if he keeps both uh, uh, the, the the legs of the uh, growth, meaning growth and uh, uh, social spending, uh, going together, uh, I think he, he would bring huge change. And and as far as women is concerned. Uh, from his Gujarat days, I followed at least some of it, you know, to, uh, towards the last few years of his Gujarat, I followed very closely. Uh, 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 his great emphasis was on women, you know, uh, he used to, uh, as chief minister, on the first day that the schools would open, uh, he would be in the villages actually, you know, to take the girls uh, to school. So that was his way of, you know, it's not only, you know, things like Meti Bachao, Meti Padao, uh, 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 Andolan, etc., that he uh, would do, but uh, he himself directly, you know, for a whole month he would spend in the village every year. Okay, uh, Professor Panagria, since you have witnessed it firsthand, tell us more about it. How did he create this constituency first as Chief Minister of Gujarat, and of course now uh, he's trying to make it a pan India constituency for his party? Well, you know. He was always, and, and uh, I had a one hour long conversation with him. Uh, this was around maybe 2012 or early 2013, when I first met him actually uh, in his office uh, in, in, in Gandhinagar. And, and, and these are the things, you know, uh, uh, th th that he described. And, and he was very uh, upset at the time. He said that, you know, uh, we, we learned a little too late about the, uh, the, the uh, uh, ratio uh, uh, of uh, uh, female births to male births, uh, which in Gujarat happened to be uh, lower than uh, what it was nationally and, and among the lowest ones uh, uh, at the time. Uh, but but he had been working on that as well. Uh, so so he was very aware uh, that that this was an issue for for Gujarat. Uh, also, malnutrition among the women was a big issue for him at the time. Uh, in Gujarat, so 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 he spent time both on you know things where he succeeded. Uh, he told me about those and and this uh, uh, program uh, about uh, taking the girls to school was was one of them. Uh, 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 so you know uh, uh, he he very much uh, was uh, paying attention, and now of course you know nationally he, okay. he very much uh, uh, he has more uh, leverage also, right? Because uh, uh, LPG as, as it is, uh, Se Jal, uh, these are things we can do far more effectively from the center. All right, Professor Panagri, I appreciate your time. Thank you so much and always a pleasure to speak to you, sir. Uh, let's decode this Mahila factor a little more with people who have been watching this election very, very closely. Dr. Nalin Mehta, author of the new BJP, is joining me. Also on the show is Rahul Verma, fellow at CPR and political analyst. I appreciate your time. Dr. Mehta, Women as a voter have propelled victories of several parties in multiple states, from Naveen Patnaik to Mamata Banerjee to Nitish Kumar. There are many such examples. So when it is about state welfare versus center's welfare, then how does this women as an aspirational block play out? So I think you're absolutely right, uh, uh, Maria, that uh, um, that th that there is a distinction between state and, and central welfare. I think there are two aspects here. The first is that um, in a state like UP, for example, uh, there was not that much distinction between what was state programs and, and center programs. The state fundamentally focused, the state government fundamentally focused on implementing central government programs more efficiently compared to before. So um, that was also the case in Uttarakhand. The second, I think, is the, uh, the fact that the BJP added, uh, along with a deep focus on, well, on, on deep gender focus on welfare spending, and this is outside of what were called women-centric schemes in generic welfare schemes, a gender focus and, and a division of that, uh, also on a major political outreach on political representation. But I'll come to that in a second. Uh, you know, Modi often speaks about this in his speeches, and he has in, uh, in several cases. You, you would have noticed even in his victory speech, um, he's focused a great deal on talking about women voters. Uh, Modi speaks about this in terms of uh, different welfare schemes addressing uh, women issues from cradle to birth. Um, one yes. of the, you know, we've spoken a lot about LPG, uh, uh, um, uh, the Ujwala Yojana, Professor Panagri spoke about it as well. Uh, one of the less talked about schemes is the PM Matra Vandana Yojana, launched in 2017. Um, uh, between, uh, since then, about 15.4 million pregnant women have been enrolled in that scheme uh, between 17 and 20. 
And of these 13.8 million women, which is a huge number, received cash benefits. Then you have Beti Bachao, uh, uh, Beti Padao, which is a women-centric scheme. Um, you have the Swachh Bharat uh, um, uh, uh, schemes under which over 100 million toilets were built in India. Right. Um, and the PM specifically called it Izzat Ghar. I yes. want to make one uh, simple point. I mean, if you look at a scheme like Mudra Yojana, 68% hmm. beneficiaries are women. Uh, you will look at a scheme like Stand Up India, 81% are beneficiaries. That gives you a sense of what I mean by non-traditional women schemes. Hmm. Finally, on women's representation, um, the BJP today, much like what it did with caste, is more representative of women in its leadership structures than other parties. And the data point is this. Um, it can be much more, uh, but 16.9% of the BJP's office bearers today are women, compared to 14.7% in CPM, 13% in Trinamool Congress, 11% in CPI, 10.8% in NCP, and 8.5% in the Indian National Congress, including Sonia Gandhi. That's, I mean, there are many other numbers Those I can give you. Fascinating numbers, that's, that's certainly, uh, Nalin Mehta. Rahul, uh, loosely a phrase is used in elections, a vote bank that is silent. Um, is women really in that category of a silent voter? Uh, silent voter category is a misnomer. Yes. Um, the reason why, uh, because many a times uh, this category is used post-election to explain some kind of uh, wording. See, uh, there are always going to be some groups or uh, a collection of individuals who would not be able to reveal their preferences in the run-up to election. Uh, and you could categorize them as silent voter, right? Now, uh, uh, in 90s and 2000s, uh, analysts used to say this about lower caste, especially uh, Dalits and, and in certain cases Muslims because uh, or, or poor voters. Uh, post-2014, some have been ascribing this to uh, women voters, especially when they vote for BJP. But, but I wouldn't basically call women uh, as silent voter because uh, one, now uh, the tendency of... So we were seeing two things uh, for last 10, 15 years. One, the registration rate among women voters were increasing. Yes. So basically, the share of women voters were equal, in some places getting equal to men. Uh, the second trend, trend we were seeing is that there was a greater increase in their turnout uh, and some of the numbers you mentioned in the beginning. So that trend was visible for last seven, eight years. Earlier, the turnout gap between men and women used to be very large, which closed in 2019. The third trend, which has become visible in past six, seven years, is that in certain states, what we are witnessing, that women are also making distinct political choices, i.e. Yes. They, they are voting for one particular party more in comparison to others. And what we saw in this election in 2022, uh, that in four states where the BJP won, uh, they had a higher share among women voters. And if you just think about the UP, not only BJP had a dis uh, uh, BJP had an advantage among uh, women voters, but Samajwadi Party had a great disadvantage among women voters. Yes. So the total gap just among the women voters is producing half of the gap between SP and BJP in total vote share. Okay, then in that case, uh, Dr. Nalin Mehta, what we are seeing today, what do you say has been in the works for years? I remember meeting women in Dang in Gujarat during the elections five years ago and meeting women in 2019 and they have been talking about it. Do women as a constituency impose for faith only after they have tested governments over years? They don't just take, uh, you know, they don't get taken in by just big bang announcements. They test them and then only they impose faith. Maria, you mentioned Dang's. Uh, I think it's pertinent to say here that uh, in Gujarat, when Narendra Modi was chief minister, the women constituency was fundamentally important in powering Narendra Modi's wins in 2007, to, uh, uh, 12, and and uh, and even in 17, uh, when when he was no more uh, chief minister of uh, of Gujarat. Um, he's brought that model of seriously concentrating on creating a new women factor for the BJP as prime minister at the, in, 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 through four or five different strategies. I think we saw this shift started, um, Rahul is right, uh, uh, historically, 
women were always voting less than men that started changing historically they also voted much more for congress than bjp that started changing from the early 2000s and the bjp's four five strategies from early to uh, 2014 onwards uh, made that made that shift overt um, the point i want to make here is that it's not um uh, the women the 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 what we are seeing two things one women are voting slightly significant are voting much more than men secondly they are voting differently from men apart from specific communities uh, the the up data shows us a, six, a 13% difference between men and women voting for the a 13% advantage for bjp in in one poll a 16% in in the other poll mm -hmm. i also think that um if parties don't deliver on what yes. women think they are they are uh, they are voting for yes. the shift backward will also be much faster yes so rahul i exactly have 30 seconds for you if women despite inflation despite economic distress despite concerns of an unemployed male member in the house give bjp a thumbs up then what does it mean uh, that some of those issues are very very important issues but they are not not the primary issues on which women or even the entire state voted see i'm i'm not at all trying to say that economic concerns were not very important in fact if you look at the 2022 data it suggests that uh, bjp is not doing that great among the first time voters 18 to 25 category students and unemployment unemployed youth so those concerns are very important but they are only going to shift their vote if there is a much better or much more credible alternative perhaps the opposition is failing to convince voters that they can do something about these things all right rahul varma and alin mehta thank you so much for decoding the m factor or the mahila voter in these elections and as we say that in up there is an emergence of a new my which is not muslim yadav that we have been see seeing and witnessing election after election this is the new reference point which is mahila plus yojana and that's what the opposition has to counter do they have an alternative do have a, do they have an alternative model is something that we'll have to wait and see that's all from me i'll be seeing you next weekend with another episode of a billion ideas